Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. Romans 3.20. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, help us to understand the true meaning of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Help us to realize the meaning of Torah and our conscience of sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. St. Paul was writing this explanation of <coughs> the meaning of law to Christians in the Romans. And he wanted to highlight <coughs> how Jewish Christians were reluctant in following their learnings from the book of laws. They were very indifferent in terms of practicing the law. First five books are called Torah, that is, books of the law. As we know that there are many laws <coughs> Some are positive sense, some are in negative. All these were given to these people to be kind, to love one another. And that's why <clears throat> leaders who wanted to explain the meaning of uh, the <clears throat> law, they started telling that the beginning and the end of law is kindness. The beginning and the end of the law is kindness. Paul, when he wants to conclude that passage in chapter Romans, verse 20, he says, therefore, he was explaining how they were relating themselves with the law. He said, and therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight. Don't think that you have a law with you. And they were claiming that in the context of so many other gods being worshipped by non-Jewish communities. The monotheism, one God concept was promoted by them. And therefore, they thought they were special, they were selected and chosen by God. Like in India, in Karanite tradition, there are many gods. Judaism alone praising or praying to only one God, monotheistic people. And that's why they thought they were selected, chosen, and special. But Paul wanted to tell them that you are no longer special to God. You cannot be considered as righteous one. Since you are not following what you learn from the law. But only one thing is very clear. Because of the law, <clears throat> you are conscious about the sin. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. More than the law, the need of God's grace is very, very important. Now we are going to read that one. He says, 
rather through the law we become conscious of sin otherwise no one would have learned what was sin martin luther says sin is essentially departure from god it is essentially departure from god genesis chapter 6 genesis chapter 6 verse 5 and 6 the lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become genesis 6:5 the lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become and that every inclination of the thoughts of this art was only evil all the time evil all the time the lord was grieved in tamil kadavul manasthava pattar manidanai padaitadarkaga kadal vedana adaindar the lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth and his heart was filled with pain his heart was filled with pain the 5th century saint <coughs> john chrysostom later became bishop in minor asia in one of the cities in turkey <coughs> he was arrested persecuted every sunday we use part of the prayer that was written by him every sunday we use his prayer prayer of st john the chrysostom he says there is only one calamity that is sin only one calamity that is sin and saint saint agustin 4th century saint saint agustin of hippo <coughs> he was from one of the african cities uh, called hippo h i p h i p p o hippo saint agustin lived in the 4th century sin is an energy in a wrong channel it is an energy but in a wrong channel not a productive one a destructive one now paul teaches through his letter the people the christians in rome that through the law we become conscious of sin conscious of sin psalm is also talks about how people are against god psalm 14 psalm 14 verse 3 psalm 14 verse 3 all have turned aside they have together become corrupt there is no one who does good not even one and similar text is reproduced in psalm 53 psalm 53 verse 3 psalm 53 3 everyone has stayed away they have together become corrupt together become corrupt there is no one who does good not even one not even a single person not even a single person romans 3 in 324 paul explains the necessity of learning the meaning of grace given by lord jesus christ he was the one who introduced the meaning of grace he made it available to all the people romans 
3, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Because in Jewish tradition, there, are, there was a specific offertory called sin offertory, sin offering. When they offer for a particular sin, and they will be forgiven. Similar concept was taken up by the Roman Church, Roman Catholic Church, that was very much opposed by Martin Luther. Rich people from royal family, they used to commit all sorts of sins. They kill even ordinary people. After that, they go to the priest and buy, by paying money, they get a small paper called indulgence, power money proceed. It is called indulgences, indulgence. They had fixed rates for many kinds of sin, from robbery to murder, from little sins to major one. When these things were happening, general public were agitating, but they were not able to express. They were under the impression that Catholic Church, the church in the 16th century, was not helping them. No guidance at all in terms of Christian spirituality by the Roman Church. Having understood the public opposition towards this concept of indulgences, Martin Luther started writing many pamphlets he translated first New Testament into German language. It was popularized thanks to the printing press. He printed New Testament in German language. And that's why when Ziegenball came from Germany, he was sent by Frederick VII of Denmark, but he was a German pastor, studied in a very famous German university. At the age of 22, he came to India. The first satan made by him was to learn Tamil and to translate German New Testament into Tamil language. In the year 1511, he came in the year, he printed, Martin Luther King printed <coughs> New Testament in 1521, 1521, whereas Zegen Ball again there, 1711, <coughs> 1711, within four years of his coming, he landed Trankabar in the year 1706. He learned Tamil. He translated New Testament in Tamil. He printed the first uh, book in, in, in Tamil. The first book now is kept in London Museum. It is being preserved there. when Jewish people were misguiding, Jewish leaders, religious leaders were misguiding people, Jesus came and told them, salvation is free, forgiveness is free, grace is important. In order to exhibit the grace, he demonstrated the, P, the grace and love on the cross. 
and this is a season to celebrate the love, mercy, and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to take this gospel to many people. Forgiveness was sold for money. Jesus gave it freely. Romans 3, 24, and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Paul was very, very a learned person. This term, redemption, was used by Roman governments, Roman rich people. When someone who was a slave wanted to be relieved, he or she had to pay ransom money. After that only, he or she who was slave and the Roman Empire will be redeemed. And this concept was used by St. Paul when he was writing to the Christians in Rome. There was a theological person called Pascal. He said, Man is being filled with error. Man is being filled with error. This error is natural and without grace, ineffaceable. Nothing shows him truth. Everything deceives him. He is deceived. He is not understanding the truth. Without grace, Lord introduced the grace and exhibited, demanded the grace on the cross. 